Hi, friends. I'm so excited to have you here with me today to interview the fabulous Kelly Fisher. Kelly, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Now, Kelly, I know that you are a San Diego medium. In fact, that's the name of your company. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got started? Oh, yes. I, can't, I try to keep it short, but um, I have from a very young age been very aware of spirit, of um, seeing things outside of myself that other people maybe didn't see. So, you know, I think there was a man walking down the road because um, I saw a man walking down the road, but nobody else could see him. So it's uh, something that's been with me for a long time. I've always been a little bit different, but having been raised in a um, Catholic church and in a Christian school, I kind of put it in the, I tucked it away, sort of closed it off and um, didn't talk about it much. And then as I got older, about, I want to say 10 years ago, I started to have spirit loved ones come to me. I'd be in an elevator and I had somebody come right next to me and say, you know, in, in spirit and say, that's my daughter. It's her birthday. You have to tell her that I'm here. And I'm thinking, I might be crazy. They're going to definitely think I'm crazy. So I don't think I'm sharing that. Um, it wasn't, it was sort of a fortuitous thing. I turned on the TV one night and I saw um, a phenomenal medium, actually. She's local. Her name's Monica Tenkate, and she has a show, and she was talking about her mediumship. And then um, James Van Prague, who is a, a wonderful medium as well, came on to her show, and I ended up finding out he's local in, in San Diego. He's in Encinitas. Looked him up, and um, fast forward, that he became a mentor of mine and I got certified as a medium through him. And um, so that's kind of how this all came about that he sort of helped me come out of the closet and own my gift and um, work with it. And so it's a continual development, but um, continuing, you know, my progress forward and um, working under some amazing teachers. So that's kind of a, in a nutshell how it came to, to fruition. That is so cool. It's, it's funny because James Van Prague is also somebody that I really admire. And my two older boys are empaths. And I took them to train with him over a weekend course. How cool is that? That's great. It's a wonderful thing to be an in-tune parent, too, when you have children who are empathic um, to, or, or mediumistic or clairvoyant, whatever it is that they are, to have a supportive parent to help them through that development early on is great. Mm -hmm. And is that something that you had, even though you were raised in the Catholic and Christian faiths? Did you have parents who honored this gift? It's a really good question. And, and yet the answer is yes. I was so blessed to have uh, wonderful parents who were very accepting. They didn't always understand it, but um, they were, they never made me feel weird or crazy or anything like that. And um, also have an aunt who is um, a, a fairly well-known channel. Uh, so it's a little bit different than being a medium, but uh, she, when she came out as a channel, she was a successful business person and everybody thought in our family, everybody thought she was crazy that she just lost her mind and as we saw her work um, begin to you know believe in what she did and so she sort of paved the way so when I came out and said hey I talked to dead people they said oh of course of course you do <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> so yeah it, it sort of runs in the family oh that's beautiful and would you share with us some of the stories that you have been able to witness in this kind of work that you do Daily, I'm able, when I work with clients, I'm able to just connect them with their, their parents, their friends, their brothers, their sisters, um, in ways that, you know, they, they thought this person has, has passed away and I will never see them or talk to them again. And I'm able to sort of reconnect them. Um, they have always been there. You know, they're very involved in our lives, but um, we don't always recognize them, right? Because we go about our, our, our life in the physical world and um, we don't acknowledge that spirit's very involved with us. So there's just, there's so many stories, but I love bringing through somebody who's passed a mom with um, a name and what she used to look like and what, what, what they used to do together and the, the 
the necklace that the daughter still has that, you know, is in the box, on the dresser, in their room. That's the kind of uh, evidential reading that I just love to do. Do you find that you get any of the readings where somebody's really struggling on their life path right now, not knowing which road to take or, you know, what they need to be doing in career or family or relationship and their loved one is able to guide them in the right direction? Yes, I often find that um, their loved ones still want to have an opinion, they still have an opinion, so they want to be heard. And um, we're able to sort of look at um, either intuitively or with the help of spirit, we're able to look at, you know, what paths might lie ahead and what the potentials are. I don't um, proclaim to know the future, but I can see um, either intuitively again or with you know mom and spirit helping me out I can see what path might look the most promising and might feel the best and um, help kind of give them that guidance so there's, there's also a piece to it that I find interesting that I've learned through this work where spirit knows we're in the physical world to learn. And um, so they won't always give us the answers that we're looking for, even though you can tell that they know um, what direction we should head in, but they leave it up to us. So um, we do get that direction. And then sometimes it's a bit frustrating because it's they, they'll say that's for you to, to really develop on your own and find out that's part of your soul journey. Wow, that's, that's a really important piece because sometimes when I'm doing my own work, I always wonder, is, is this something that's needed or is this, can this be let go right away? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And sometimes they'll weigh in and sometimes they'll let you know, you know, how to work through it on your own. Um, but they're always there to help. Have you ever had a loved one tell you and then say, but don't tell them? Yes, I have had that experience. Um, I'll tell you in what, what situation I'm thinking of in particular. It happens uh, every so often, but um, I had a gentleman who had a reading with me and he, um, his marriage is not so good and he wanted to connect with mom because he and mom were so close and she was the one that he would have always gone to and talked to about this sort of thing. And he was trying to weigh as girls and, um, you know, who are, who are still being raised, right? They're still... Um, at home with him. And so he was trying to weigh out, is it better if I stay in this marriage for my children or is it okay if I step away? And um, what's interesting is the mom came through and she told me, she says, you know, I never really liked his wife anyway. And I'm thinking, well, I can't, I can't say that to him. Um, and, and she said, she said, well, don't say that. So she it was kind of, she let me in on her opinion, but I wasn't going to share that with him. But she did say, she said, um, there was some guidance about where he used to go to think and write when he was a child. And she brought him back to um, go out in nature, go do what you used to do as a child when you were struggling with an issue. And basically I'll meet you there and we'll, we'll work through it together. And, um, she gave him permission though. She said, whatever your choice is, I support it. So it was, um, I don't really like her and it's okay if you leave her, but uh, that's what I got. But what I gave was more of uh, instructions for him to get there on his own. It's a, it's a bit like air traffic control. You know, I've got my recipient in front of me and I've got spirit or spirits, plural, behind me. And um, trying to filter out exactly what needs to be said and, um, and you know, and, and what my sitter can handle, my recipient can handle, because I do deal with more difficult, um, sometimes murders and, um, you know, questionable deaths and stuff like that, where I'll be given a lot of detail so I can understand it, but the person I'm, I'm working with doesn't necessarily need to know all of that. Um, to get the message that's important. Wow, what a blessing to be able to receive these messages on behalf of these other people who are feeling lost and, and feeling at such a dark time in their life. Yes, I, it, it is it's such a wonderful work. I, I really do love it. Um, it's not always easy, but it is always interesting. And um, my, my goal is to always leave somebody better than I found them. So um, we all have the ability to connect. 
um, in one way or another, you know, whether it's intuitively or if we're a bit more psychic or if we're a little mediumistic, we all have that ability, but it's hard to, to remain objective when you're the person in the center of the situation. So it's nice to have a third party to sort of uh, receive the information and give it um, in a way that we can understand it for our current situation. And as far as being able to understand the message that you're getting, do you hear it? Do you feel it? You said you actually see the deceased person. Yes. So I, I used to see it all the time and it scared me. And so I wanted to nothing more than for to shut it down because I didn't understand it. And now I want nothing more than to see it because it would make my job so much easier. Um, but yet they work with me at now. Spirit works with me um, what we call subjectively. So objectively is when you're seeing spirit outside of yourself. So it actually looks like a ghost or it looks like a person. Um, subjectively is when I'm receiving the messages inside so i'm seeing it in my in my mind's eye and in my third eye basically um so I, I receive it in all different ways uh, i work with my clairsentience which is my feeling how it feels in your gut and um, through that clairsentience there are different facets like the clairvoyance and the clairaudience and um, so clairvoyance is i'll actually see a picture um, but I might see a picture and it could just be a train that doesn't tell me anything until I get the feeling behind the train. And then I understand, you know, is this to do with work or is this how dad got to work or is this a, a model train, you know, and then that will help give me evidence around who my communicator is and what they're trying to tell me. So with every piece of, of information I receive, there are different facets to it that need to be explored. So um, yeah, so I'll hear it, I'll see it, I'll feel it. And the best one is what we call claircognizance, which is when you just know it. And um, that as a medium is really what we're trying to develop to achieve is that, that claircognizance more than anything. That's an answer in a nutshell, but the other really interesting thing that I've understood over time is with this kind of work is spirit is it's like learning a language they're learning to communicate with me and i'm learning to communicate with them and um to see something objectively outside of myself or very clairvoyant clairvoyantly um in my mind's eye takes quite a bit of my energy so what they're learning to do um, and through my development is use less and less of my energy to give me more information so it's almost more subtle it's more of that clear knowing that clear cognizance um, than it is so so bright and colorful and loud you know it actually becomes um, softer and and not quite so bold i guess is the best way to put it but sometimes i wish that i could go back to those first readings where everything was seemed so crisp and clear you know have you ever felt like there were more than one trying to give you a message at the same time have you ever been bombarded with information yes i have so um that's an interesting thing because they're they organize themselves in order of their need. So I, I always thought that it was the, in, uh, in order of the need of the person I was speaking to. But actually, in the spirit world, they have needs as well. So if mom, for example, passed away 20 years ago and never said, you know, I'm sorry for, um, for maybe being an absent mother, that, that need is very great because she's waited. Uh, time is different in their world. But in our world, it's been 20 years for her to try to get through to tell her daughter, I'm so sorry. Uh, I wish I would have done this a little bit differently. So mom in that case will probably come through first. Um, so, so they come through in order of need, but we do find that just because they've crossed over doesn't mean they've totally lost their personality. So if you had a really loud um, center of attention kind of pushy person, they're going to be that way in spirit as well. And they'll, they'll elbow their way through to be the first person that you get to talk to. And, um, and those are oftentimes fun spirit to talk to because they're very communicative. They are loud and they want to be seen and heard. Um, but then you'll, you'll have grandma hanging out way in the back in the corner because she was, you know, a giver and would let anybody go before her. So it's kind of fun then to reach back and say, you can come forward now. It's okay. Oh. So. 
Yeah. So that's, that's interesting. I also have a spirit guide who I call my gatekeeper guide and he will help uh, to organize them as well. So I sort of leave the, the work mostly to them. And every now and then I have to intercede and say, you guys behave yourselves, <laughs> get organized and come through one by one. So you have a bouncer. I have a bouncer. Yeah. And he's a good one. <laughs> so as long as he's willing to work with me, I'm going to let him stick around. Oh, that's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. Now being here on planet earth can be very difficult. There's lots going on in the world. That's, that's bad. There's lots that's good. Our human experience. Sometimes we feel like we're on a roller coaster. We have these good days, bad days. And sometimes we feel like we're just really, really down and we don't know how to get ourselves out based on everything that you have learned in the work that you do, what kind of advice or message would you give to everybody listening and watching for the times when they're feeling low? Oh, that's a good question. That's a hard question. You know, the answer that, that comes to the forefront for me is that when you feel low, you usually feel lonely. And uh, what I've learned through this work is that we are never alone and we're never unloved. We are so surrounded by those who, who love us, by those who've agreed to help us through this journey. And um, it is a journey and it is, it, we, it, the, our earth classroom is the hardest classroom. So learning lessons isn't always a walk in the park, um, but they are a, an opportunity for your soul's growth. And there's a reason that we're here and there's a reason we've chosen to go through these challenges. But we also have agreed on some soul level not to do it by ourselves. So we forget, we, we come, we forget that we are here and we're surrounded by so much help and so much love. So I would say on those dark days, um, just to remember that, that this is um, a journey where you have helpers um, and you have those who, who've always loved you by your side. Wonderful. And while we are in those load times feeling lonely and there, there's resources available, how do we access this, this extra support? Do we just ask? Is there something we need to say or do? Yeah, you know, a lot of times it's asking and then it's being still and being quiet enough to trust the responses because there will always be a response but you do have to get quiet and you do have to trust that you're not crazy and that you might be receiving information from those who help. Um, so I would say that that's, that's a good way to reach out and, and um, you know, ask for resources, ask for a helping hand. But for those who say, well, I cry out and I don't hear anything you know, then, then what, am I alone or is nobody helping me? Um, I think in, in those times, it's, that's where it's important to remember that, you know, there, there will be another side to the struggle. You just, you've got to, you've got to just wake up, put one foot in front of the other and take it one, one step at a time and you'll get to the other side. Um, and, and you'll, you may look back and realize I didn't do that by myself, even though you felt you were journeying by, on your own. It reminds me of a plaque that my dad used to have on the wall uh, when I was growing up and it, I think it was called footprints in the sand. And it was a, something from the Christian church when the man cried out, God, at my, at my time of need, you know, you weren't walking beside me. There was only one set of footprints. And he said, well, that's when I was carrying you. I love that. I've always loved that. Um, yeah, that quote or, or the poem or whatever it is, but it's beautiful and it is symbolic um, of, of what I think really does happen, that we really do get carried through um, these situations. And even when it's a situation where we're not meant to be carried because we have to walk it, because we have to experience it for our soul's growth, there's somebody holding your hand. There's, there's somebody right there next to you who's agreed to come in and help you through, through this life. Beautiful. And Kelly, do you have any insights for us for any of the younger generation and all of the emotional pain that they're feeling? Because there's so much violence going on right now. Suicide is on the rise. Anxiety is on the rise. There's so much pain. Do you have any hope that we can offer to the young generation? You know, the young, the younger generation is so inspiring um, to me. I mean, it's weird that there's generations younger than me. It makes me feel old, but um, they, you know, just even with this most recent gun violence in Florida, 
the, the fact that they were able to find their voices and speak out and, and in many situations look more mature than the adults who they're supposed to look up to um, is very inspiring. I think that these generations that are that are coming in, that are that are coming of age and then and then those that are just being born um, are a, a bit more aware of what's going on. And I think that's why they feel so deeply because they come in feeling more connected. And when you feel connected, you feel each other's pain. And um, so I would say that, that that is a good thing, even though it doesn't feel good. Um, so I don't know if that inspires hope, but there's, um, the the new the the younger generations inspire hope in me that we're heading in a better direction um, as a human race and and that even though you might feel pain very very deeply that um, there are ways to work through it and when what I notice is when I speak to spirit who's commit who have committed suicide um, ninety nine point nine percent of the time they say I wish I wish I I could have looked at it from a different angle. Um, if I could have just gone another day, maybe I could have seen it differently. And, um, and now I've got to go back and do it again. So we do need to, to fight to stay here um, because th we're here for a purpose. And um, it's not always meant to be easy. So, uh, but, it, but there will be days where you'll see the light, you'll see the love, and you'll see the beauty and the reason that you've come. Oh, thank you so much. That's such a beautiful message. And what about for the parents who are struggling with trying to help their kids make it through each day? Do you have any kind of a message for them for how they can support their intuitive little ones? Yes. Um, so with intuitive or empathic or just special children who, um, you know, who feel deeply and, and see maybe perhaps more than, than their parents see. I think support and, and just love, just, just making that unconditional love known to them at every turn is the most important because they may not ever understand that child fully um, and they may not be meant to understand them. But but if that child feels like no matter what I say, no matter what I do, I'm unconditionally loved, um, I think that that can do volumes for raising a healthy child. I'm answering this as, as a mother and then with the, the bit of experience I've had with my um, experience one foot in the physical world and one foot in the spirit world and trying to bridge that um, the two worlds together is um, when your child is in pain, I think the most important part is to acknowledge it um, and, and not to tell them, not to shut it down or to, to tell them stop crying or stop feeling that way or get up and dust yourself off because it is, it is a true experience. You have to, you have to acknowledge and you, and it's better if you can journey it with them, hold their hand through it, and um, and understand the pain. So if you remember when your kids were little and they fell down and scraped their knee and they're wailing as if they just lost a leg, the pain for them is real. And so it's acknowledging, I know you've hurt yourself and I know that it feels bad and I, we're going to wash it off and we're gonna put a Band-Aid on it and in time it will heal and it'll get better, but for the next few days, it's probably gonna hurt a little bit. Um, and I think that that can, you, it can be applied to somebody who's older is going through a really difficult, painful, emotional situation, you know, is, is not to say, hey, you know, stand up and dust yourself off so much as to say, I know this is really hard for you right now. And I know that it, it, you must feel like this is the end, but um, if you can go to sleep and wake up the next day, things might look a little bit different and, um, and in time it will heal, it will get better. Oh, I just, I'm so happy to have you here with us spreading this, so this message. There's so much hope here. How can people get a hold of you? If, if they would like to reach out and see if you're a good fit for working with them or their, their loved ones. Yes, um, I would love for people to reach out, even if they just have questions, not even, you know, not just to, to book a session, but if they just want to ask um, questions, I'm, I could talk about this all day. So, um, so I'm so happy to, to answer questions. The best way to reach out is um, 
probably through my website, there's a way to send an inquiry. So my website is www.socalmedium.com and um, there's a little space where they can send an inquiry. So they could do that. Or I also have a Facebook page. I believe it's just under my name, Kelly Fisher, but they could just search Kelly Fisher, SoCal Medium Facebook, and they can message me on there. And I usually get that uh, fairly instantly on my website there's a phone number that they can text also so it's not just for calls um, so there are a number of ways to reach out and I you know if, if I don't get back right away certainly we'll we'll get to everybody in, in due time and answer their questions okay beautiful and do you do sessions with people at a distance or is it only in the SoCal area no, I do. I do Skype sessions and FaceTime. I've been lucky enough to have clients from all over the world. Um, so, you know, working in the time zones is a bit of a challenge, but we, we work it out and find a time that works well for everybody. And the connection is actually um, just as strong uh, over Skype or over the phone as it is in person. And um, sometimes even better because if I don't see that person, I'm not tuning into the way that they're responding to me. I'm, I'm just tuned into spirit. So I, I love it. Any way it comes, it's, a, it's, it's always a challenge. It's always one that I enjoy. Oh, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today, for being on my channel. I, I'm so excited and so grateful to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on and to talk with you. So thank you for letting me share a little bit about mediumship. I would love for everybody to know that consciousness does survive, that this is not um, just a, a one and done sort of life where we live and then we die and that's it. That um, what we do in this life really matters. So um, watch, watch every thought, every, um, you know, every day, every time you help somebody, it, it does actually matter and, um, and love survives. So, um, walk through every day with as much love and as much awareness and um, presence as you can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been so good talking with you. Bye. Bye, guys. Mwah.